Hey, what's good? It's your boy Trayvon Perry. And today I got some very, very special guests in the building with me. I call them my gospel industry uncles. None other than the legendary William Brothers. What do you know about that? What you know about that, man? What's up? What's up? Hey, man. man how you doing? What up? Man, what up? listen. You guys are legends, man. I, 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 I don't know if they told you this, but you guys are legends. I know y'all know this already, though. Mm. You guys have been doing some amazing things. Uh, I'm going to give y'all a chance to introduce yourself, but I just want to tell y'all what y'all mean to me in my household and growing up. Uh, mm. All of the music, man. My father listened mm. to you guys, uh, Canton Spirituals and uh, all of those guys. You know, I grew up listening to that stuff. And you got you guys I really could groove with because you know y'all had all them you had you know you had all that kind of R and B ish type stuff mixed with <laughs> a little bit a little so that's what I like. That was catching to my ear as a young man. Okay. So you guys have been uh really special to me. Um I got I gotta say that, man. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for coming on to sit with me today, man. You you guys are amazing, man. Y'all don't know what y'all just did for me, man. For real. Hey man, well thanks for having us on today. It's our thank pleasure you. to be with yeah. you. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank yes, you, man. Sir. Yeah, and for those of you that are tuning in, we got uh, our good brother. That's 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 Doug. Um, all right, Elder Doug is with us, and then we right got here, we got, we got Bishop Melvin with us, and and then we got uh, in the house, in the house, in the house. <laughs> then we got Minister Dre Tate. Uh, yes. he he's somewhere. He coming back. Uh, but listen, man, you guys are in the midst of doing a lot of things. Talk to us about your journey. Uh, cope, uh, COVID, post COVID. How's everything going with you guys? Right now, I'm doing pretty good, man. I, I, um, I was back about a month ago, man. I had pneumonia, but I, I was tested negative for all that stuff. And then after that, after that, doing all my shots and my boosters, went to a little kids' birthday party, and then some of them had fever. Then I caught COVID for like a week and a half, but I'm I'm good to go, man. I am good, man. It was very, very. Very, very mild, very mild. So I'm good to go. Yeah. Well, thank God for that, man. Yeah. Thank God for that, man. Have we lost uh, <laughs> the rest of you guys? Have y'all dealt with COVID and, and things of that nature? Have you, you know? Well, I thank God that I haven't uh, had to deal with it. Uh, my kids, uh, a couple of my kids did uh, have COVID. Um, but my wife and I, we were blessed to not get it. And I thank God for that because you know, this has been a very trying period for a lot of people all over this world. Um, many friends, many uh, uh, relatives that we know uh, passed away from COVID. So the last last two, two and a half years has been very trying, but I thank God that he has kept us here. And uh, I, you know, I can say like my son, man, I'm still here and God has kept us, man, I'm blessed. Yeah, by, by the way, that's yeah. one of my favorite, favorite songs. Okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen that and man, and you know, they just announced on the news a couple of days ago, it's, we've reached that million, a million, uh, million, million deaths. Mark, uh, deaths lost uh, yeah. from COVID, man. And and, uh, and the, from uh, from that, it's, and it's amazing, man, that, uh, that, um, God is still in the midst of all of this, and and I I just I would be I would be absolutely afraid to know how many out of that million people, uh, the million people, how many Williams brothers fans we lost, man, over the over the couple of years, man. So yeah. so this this tour, man, I'm going into it. So this tour, man. Uh, the, the the farewell nothing but the hits tour is definitely for the fans and we're gonna leave it all on the table all on the floor and uh because you know and that's for all of the ones that's that's going on and uh we're gonna dedicate this whole entire tour to two of the two of the guys that played on probably the what 75 80 percent of our hit songs classic yeah. songs uh Tara Patrick Gallon and uh Dwight Gordon so we're gonna you know, guitar player and lead and the bass player, man, and singers, man. So, it's uh, it's it's going to be off the chain, though. Man, I believe it. Why are we farewell? What, why are we saying farewell? We we done. We done. We we, we, we getting old. We getting old, man. <laughs> 
Well, you know, um, we've been doing this, and I know, Dre, you didn't have a chance to uh, speak on the COVID situation. That I know you've dealt with it on a, a couple of times, and uh, I'll let you talk about that, and then we'll go to go into the, this family. Well, I mean, we're concerned to COVID, man. COVID have changed my life completely, man. I, I've lost friends, and uh, just recently, I lost my uh, mother-in-law to COVID, and the same COVID that that took her out was the same COVID that I had myself, you know. And uh, yes. matter of fact, between between Christmas and New Year's, or uh, maybe a week before Christmas and New Year's, man, I contracted COVID twice, actually. Wow. Um, but God has been good, man. He's He kept me through it. I still had, and the crazy thing is, uh, I just wish people would really take it seriously because it it'll it'll actually leave you with with situations after COVID is gone that you got to deal with, you know? So, yeah, you right. know, uh, I just thank God that he really kept me through that, you know, and um, we're doing all right. Wow. Well, well Dre, you got to, you got to, he, he was asking why was, why are we doing a farewell tour? So you got to tell him. Well, we're doing a farewell <laughs> tour because it's time. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing we a farewell tour because it's time. It's six, these guys been at it for 60 years, man. You know what I'm plus. saying? So, yeah, 60 plus years. And, plus, and, yeah. and and I don't want Melvin. I'm not rolling Melvin and Doug on stage in no wheelchairs. <laughs> we ain't doing no walkers. You, you got that right. We ain't doing that. Right. Uh, uh, oh that. Hey, uh, sure. I, we we want can't. these. We want these guys to, if if we gonna sit down from this thing, from this touring, we want to do it in in the most professional and and respectable way, man. These guys have made ways for a lot of artists. Some artists that won't even won't even uh say it, but hey, the brothers have made ways for a lot of artists, and they do that respect, man. They have they have been hit makers for years. That's a fact. So. So I just think if you're going if you're gonna go out, go out with a bang, go out with a bang, and that's what this farewell, nothing but the hits tour. We gonna we we gonna take it all the way back from '73, and we are gonna bring it all the way up to today. And and we and like they said, we are gonna leave it all on stage. I was so excited about the rehearsals on a few weeks ago. We got a chance to start our rehearsals, and man, it was so look. Those songs are going to, they going to wreck, man. They, they going to move some people, man. I, I, I'm going to tell you, because we were saying God would deliver. And and before I knew it, tears was coming down my eyes because Doug was in that thing so bad, man. It was like, dude, so I can only imagine what it's going to be like live, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Man, yeah. you got, yeah. speaking of yeah. 60 plus. Hey, man. Hey, man. I go ahead. Go ahead. I want to know how far you go back. How far? What? How far you go back? How far I go back with yeah. you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, introduce my my father intru introduced me to you guys, um, and and the Canton Spirituals and. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that song stuff. that was? You know what song it was? I, I'm trying to remember. Uh, well, you to, to be uh, that song that I played. Um, that which is my favorite. Is I'm still here. Okay. That's yes, everybody's favorite. Well, yeah. see, you gotta you gotta go back to Jesus will never say no, Jesus will fix oh, it. Yeah. God the maven grace. You gotta go back to sweep around your own front door. I'm just oh, 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 oh. I'm I just probably want to say sweep around your own front door <laughs> was probably the first song oh, that, wow. I, that I was introduced to you guys. When you said that, right. I was like, Oh yeah, that just rung a bell right there. But I, I, of course, I got to pick the the, uh, the favorites. But that's what that right, was. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> but that, those songs, like I said, you know, it's <laughs> funny. Nothing does this like music. You know, when you hear a song, it takes you back to that memory that what you were doing at that specific time. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And those songs, I remember as a kid, we on our way to church, riding in the back of my, my father's car. Never in a million years would I think, you know, one day you're gonna be sitting down talking to these guys, right? Wow. And they're hey, gonna be wow. they're gonna be talking about how they calling it quits now. Hey, hey, Perry, <laughs> imagine how I feel being huh? that I've been a brothers fan since '73, since I was born, man. And who would have known that I would even be one of the guys, man? That's right? Crazy, I know man. that. I know that yeah, really trips you out. Like, yeah, like how did that happen? Let's get to that. How did that yeah. even happen? 
man, I've been a William Brothers fan. It's one thing about the, the William Brothers sound and music that I've been a fan. I've been a, I've been a fan of theirs like for years, man. My mama used to uh, play Jesus with Fixing and stuff like that when I was a baby. So I was always a William Brother fan. You know, I, I mimicked them. I mimic their their vocal abilities and stuff like that. And wow. and um, even growing up, I was saying Doug's part and Melvin's part, and and I was trying <laughs> to mimic them. You know what I'm saying? But man, yeah. I was a little boy, and I never forget. I was around nine or ten, maybe, and at the 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 Mighty Clouds of Joy uh, anniversary tour came through Houston at Sam Houston Coliseum, which is not even up the music hall or whatever, mm-hmm. and. Um, I, I I made my way backstage along with my younger brother and I met all of the guys along with their dad, Pop Williams, who knew us, but he didn't know our name, but he knew us because we would meet him every time they came to town. And as they walked to the dressing room, I told my younger brother, I said, man, I'm going to sing with them one day. He said, no, you're not. I say, I'm going to sing with them one day. You, I bet you I will. And man, I never would have imagined that, that in it would 2010. Really happen. Yeah, yeah. And 20 years later, man, I never would imagine that that I would do that for real, man. So it's been a dream come true, man. And, and it's been a journey. I have learned so much from these guys, like really, that that I pray God that blesses me to go further, you know. But, man, I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I'm blessed. Yo, yo I want those of you that are tuned in to listen to what Dre Tate just said, man. That's powerful. He spoke a mm-hmm. thing and a thing happened. Yes. Right, but he didn't just right. speak it in hocus pocus. I'm quite sure there was some actual work that went into play. You oh my god, yeah. there was yeah. some kind of way he had to get these brothers to recognize who he was and for mm-hmm. them to come on. So, after you speak a thing, faith without what is that works, works, work. yeah. he made it work, and his yeah. dream came true. That don't happen, that don't right. happen all the time. And right. Perry, right. check this out not only that, but I need these artists to understand that even in the even in the midst of trying to see your dreams come true don't trip on the obstacles don't trip on the letdowns look i played guitar for the brothers in 98 for six months to a year and got fired because i wasn't playing enough guitar or whatever like that but my dream was that i never wanted to play guitar for the brothers i wanted to sing with the brothers right so even in the midst of that i didn't give up I didn't, I didn't, I didn't showcase my gift in front of them. Matter of fact, even when I was with them that time, they never knew I could sing. Never wow. knew. But it took Stan Jones calling me to do a project with a choir here in Houston, Bishop James Dixon, a community faith choir. And I did a song called I Would Trust in the Lord. That's the first time they heard me sing. And from that point, I became a William brother from that point. Wow. That's mm-hmm. powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. You haven't inspired me. But but not only that, but not only that, he sang in the background back with the musicians. Ten years. Ten, year, ten, ten years. years uh, before he became an official Williams uh-huh. Brothers. Yeah. I sure did. Yeah. And before took it all. To the front. Trayvon, I took it all, man. They they cut me down. They were like, bro, you can sing. Well, why you got why you let them jokers have you in the background like that? You standing back there with the musician without a guitar on and stuff. And man, they told me down, but I always believe that humbleness will take you far. And I know that it was a lot I need to learn to be able to reach that dream. So in that 10 years, I took it, man. You know, I learned from the guys. And in 2010, they invited me to the front, man. And it's it's been great ever since, dude. Listen, you got to wait your turn. And yes, sir. You got to wait till it's time. Yes, sir. Many people yes, want to skip over the process for the promise. Right. That's not how right. it goes. There's a Look process. Out, you, you, better, you better speak that and say it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, right. there's, you know, there's, uh, def- uh, uh, there's definitely a process that you have to go yes. through, man. We all yes. have to go through it. I mean, even the Williams brothers from children coming up, that was a process that we had to go through. To get where we are today, you know, it, it just it just didn't happen overnight. We you know what? A lot. We had hey. some some difficult times. We had some 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 disappointments. We felt like giving up many right. times, but we know we were determined to make it happen. We were going to hang in there. If it killed us, we were going to hang in there and make this thing happen, man. So you know, it, it's a story that they told me about James Cleveland giving them their shot. That was funny to me, man. It, yeah. And, 
<laughs> hey, Melvin, tell him, tell him I changed Twitter to y'all, man. <laughs> well, first, first of all, you know, Leonard was in the group at the time, so Leonard would, he just believed he could talk his way up on anything. So we finally talked up on uh, having a, a meeting over at James Cleveland Suite with uh, Ed Smith. And uh, we told him, man, look, we want to be on the world's greatest gospel tour, you know, which had the clouds, Shirley Stephen, uh, Caravans, uh, Rance Allen, uh, all the biggies was on that on that tour. Willie and, uh, Johnson in the key Willie notes. in the key notes. I is Andrews. I is Andrews. It was big. Wow. wow. And so 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 he finally said, "Well, James Cliff said, well, let me tell you what we go do. <laughs> we go." We go give the Wigger brother. We go give y'all twelve minutes to sing, and if y'all don't do nothing, don't worry about getting on the world greatest gospel show no more. <laughs> I said we left out of that, and we like yes. He don't even know what we get ready to do here, and so our first, our first show with uh, with Tara Gatlin, we was at Cobra Hall in Detroit, Michigan. Twelve thousand people packed to the realm, okay? Mm -hmm. We came out with Jesus will never say no, won't let go of my faith, and Jesus will fix it. And that house, you you would have thought you would have thought Michael Jackson was in the house. And they <laughs> came, James Cleveland and and Ed Smith pushed us back on stage. They'll tell us to go back out there, y'all do encore. And from yeah. that man, we we were singing in Cobra Hall. We sang every Wow. Every every show, man, there was like averaging like the bad shows was like five thousand people. So we were averaging ten wow. to twelve people, twelve thousand people a night. Chicago, Detroit, Memphis, you name it. Yeah. And uh, and so from that, man, we just built an audience. Going to the workshop, we did a tour with the Mighty Cloud Joe. We did a tour with the Hawkins family, which is one of my favorite tours we did on the East Coast. And uh, so and our name just started just just yeah. going just beyond the quartets into the church yeah. market to the contemporary market and we you know, were people, with the, even too with the whining the whining mm -hmm. See, come on in with, here yeah we do, do with the whinings and we were doing ain't no need to worry a lot of people don't know doug and i say on the vamp of uh ain't no need to worry with the whinings wow and that's some history. Wait, 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 wait. we ain't gonna yeah. skip o we, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna just skip over that well, okay. You and Doug sung on the background of 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 ain't no need to worry. That's me and wow. Doug. That's me and Doug saying we've been well last only for a while. When the sun wow. shine, you were a smart. Come wow. on, that's some history for y'all. Yeah, wow. yeah man. I heard it here first. Yeah, man. The wine is on Anita Baker. Yeah, that that was yeah. us, man. I and didn't that, know that. that. I we didn't know that. Didn't know that. He's been singing with y'all for 80 years. I'm sick of it. And he didn't. Even know that. Wait a minute, Dre, 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 you didn't know that? I did not, man. I've known y'all some background with a bunch of other folks, even outside of gospel. Doug, what, what know, was your part on that, Doug? What was your part, Doug? Oh, uh, man. Song? You would put me on the spot to try to remember uh, it so long ago. Uh, it's too long ago. Yeah. That's yeah, but, why it's the farewell, nothing but the hit store. But that little part where you him, that little part where you him, mother, mother, on that record, on yeah. that record. Wow. That. And wow. he got that from me, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was I never man. knew that, that man. Yo, that yeah, is some that's some history. These are these wow. are the voices behind Ain't No Need to Work. But actually, 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 that was supposed to be the Williams, Ben Duggan, and the Williams brother song until to, to uh Nita Baker came along and she heard it and she said, Well, that's the song I want to sing on. And so they was kind of like trying to dump us off our song, you know, <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute, now wait, that ain't wow. getting that up. Because when we started, if Duck, if you can remember. You, we started the song. We started singing the song. The song didn't have no beat. It, it had no beat, right? It was no beat. It was, it was dumb. <laughs> Ain't no need to worry what the night is gonna bring. Dun, 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 dun. It'll be all over like a hymn in the morning. Wow. Said, yes, it wasn't no. It, no, yeah, man. Yeah. So wow. we. Yeah. yeah we, we've had some marvelous experiences, man. As a matter of fact, we were hanging out with Andre Cross when he recorded uh, Take Me Back. We were in the Take studio me back. film. Yeah, he recorded me Take Me Back, yes. Wow. 
Wow, that's man. that's crazy, man. Yeah, that yeah. is crazy. That's well, crazy. Yeah, yeah, we came to the we came to L.A. We was with uh, the caravans. They had the caravan. All they put them all together on the show downtown, and they had the Williams brothers and one more artist. And uh, man, everybody was coming in, and they Rolls Royces and yeah. and and and, and uh, Mercedes Benz and Jaguars. And we was like, man, who is this coming out? There's Janky. Oh, there's there's Bobby Woman. Oh, there is there's Sandra Crouch and Andre. There, and they was just coming in, getting those getting those front seats, we was like, oh my God. So Andre came back, came backstage, man, and said, uh, he said, man, you guys are great. He said, man, I came to hear y'all because I was on the bus and, and I heard this group and I thought I was dreaming. The radio was on and this song was on and they were saying, hold on, I'm holding on, which is on our first record, 1973. And he said, I gotta see who these guys are. So he came whatever year that was, 75, 76. And he came back to the dressing room and he said, man, you guys are great. If y'all ever thought about doing praise and worship music? And we was like, huh? We was like, I, I thought we was praise and worship. And you know, <laughs> we, we ain't never heard the language before we're pretty much. Right. And I was right. like, he's, and uh, he said, well, I want y'all to, Y'all, y'all know be in town. Y'all come out of the studio the next day, man. Yeah, and like to the studio. Yeah, for and we came to the studio, man. I want to meet you. I want y'all to meet my manager and booking manager. And, and at the time, he was booking. He was managing Tony, Tony, Tone, and Little Richard, and a whole lot of more artists. Uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Williams, and a bunch of them, wow. man. So we came yeah. by, and and um, I'm like, man, when that song came out, I'm like, could you believe we were in the studio? when they was doing this song with Bill Maxwell, you know, yeah. producing. I'm like, gee whiz, man. Yo, but that is great. a thing. Uh, then, I, and then I'm, then I'm going to just, I'm going to be quiet because I want to, I don't want to miss this part because a lot of people think, you know, and especially like artists, they think when they get a Grammy, a Grammy nomination, a stellar awards and a few awards, they think that is the, the epitome of, of, of a career, which it, all that's good and fine. But let me tell you, what we've done over the years was God has blessed us to build relationships and build bridges with some of the biggest <clears throat> gospel and R&B artists in the world. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm talking about when I said relationship, I'm talking about we could get on the phone and call. That's why we had the opportunity to do song with Stevie Wonder, man. We did VH1 honors and we yeah. sung with Chaka, Chaka Khan and James Taylor, man. And you know, it's just, and the list goes on and on. Al Green. Aretha. So, Aretha Franklin, come man. On, so come like, on, the legends. So, so, so when I look back and see that man and, and then having, she having, having us at the White House as o, uh, President Obama's surprise special guest, yeah. He didn't even he didn't even know we was coming, you know. All <laughs> right. All, all, all of this uh, house uh White House security and the producer of the show, man. So it was listen, you that, know you're that, doing something when you at the White House. Yes, okay? sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. You know yeah, you're doing something. These brothers, that's why I said, you know, this is the show where we give we give the flowers, you know what I mean, while while they alive. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, don't let it be said too late. You know, like you said, you guys, like Dre was saying earlier, pioneers in the game, uh, yeah. innovators, uh, trailblazers. Yeah. That's what you guys were. Uh, right. Speaking of another song that takes me back to a very pivotal moment, Cooling Waters. Cooling mm -hmm. Waters. <laughs> one, one, one of the biggest songs. One of the biggest hits from the brothers, actually. The big, yes, one of the biggest hits. I'm like, how, how could I... You know, how wasn't that the first song that popped in my head? Because I want to say that probably was the really so first song as a little kid. I'm walking around the house singing cool little waters all around the crib. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trayvon, my kids did that, too. They had that the babies, man. That's all they knew. Little, cool little water. That's little all they kids knew. still singing that song. Yeah. That song made me thirsty it. when I was younger. I said, what the hell what are they talking about? Because you know, I was a kid. I didn't know what y'all was talking about. I said, they talk about, I said, dad, they thirsty, man. They just, somebody right. can do something oh, to drink. <laughs> That, that song, that song stayed on the Billboard charts a hundred weeks, if I'm not mistaken, man. Yeah. One hundred wow. weeks, man. Yeah. It's wow. Crazy, man. Yeah, man. It's but it's it's the relationships, man. It's just so legend. 
You're speaking about relationships and the yeah. Rick Franklin and the Winans and how you went and sunk for the president. You know what I'm yeah. saying? As far Clark, as the, Clark sisters, man. The, the Clark sisters. Yeah, man. What, yeah, what man. are some of the greatest uh, relationships y'all have made in this? I mean, we're going to talk about some real stuff, but uh, what, what are some of the greatest connections y'all made in this industry and why? Why would you say that was the greatest uh, relationship? Wow, oh, that's, 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 that's a hard, hard one. one. Yeah, I know that's a hard one because y'all got so many one. years in this. Right, but let me tell right. you, let me well, let me just let me just put it this way because I have to go beyond the relationships, like individual relationships, because there's so many of them. But, but the relationship with the with a third generation of fans, man, that is the epitome of what it's all about for me, man, because. They just stuck with us, man, and for years and years, and their kids, and then their grandkids started looking, listening to our music. So it's, man, I mean, because if you start talking about individuals, man, you you can start talking about Reverend Jesse Jackson, man, about booking us, booking us with the Hawkers on the Rainbow Coalition uh, tour, man. So you know, uh, it's it's crazy. So I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a hard one, man. It That's is a hard. One. Who would you say gave y'all the greatest advice on, on your way coming up? Well, as coming up, there were there were a couple, um, believe it or not, uh, people that really sat us down uh, when when our career started to take off. One in particular that I remember is JoJo Wallace of the Sensation of Nightingales. Uh, we were very young, and he he really uh, they had come come to our Macomb, Mississippi, to perform, and the next day. He invited us by the hotel and his hotel room. We sat in his room at the hotel and he just really uh, poured into us, man, some real wisdom as far as maintaining a, a career. And he said, man, uh, what you don't do, you don't uh, raise yourself up. You let you allow God to raise you up. He wow. said, when you, you put yourself up there, then you, you're liable to fall. Yeah. Wow. But when God puts you up there, that you could stay there for a while. So, yeah, so yeah. that was some great advice. And, and then just a, a lot more. And then Ira Tucker of the Dixie Hummingbirds was another one that uh, yeah. the late, great Ira Tucker of the Dixie yeah. Hummingbirds sat us down and yeah. talked to us. He took us in the studio and just gave us, a, just poured wisdom into us, man. Mm -hmm. And that was so important. And of, and of course, the Jackson Southern Airs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Our late uh, yep. brother Frank Williams, uh, who was a yep. mentor to us. and. Uh, Older brother Hugh Williams, they poured into us as well. Yeah, Frank. Wow. Frank taught me my first my first card on the guitar, man. I turned it upside down, and that's how I got. That's how I started playing it, a, a right hand the guitar upside down, man. <laughs> and wow. uh, hey, man, let me let me let me give you a, a little history, and then you're gonna laugh again. We did our first album, Jesus for Fix It, um, God of Made and Grace, which the album was titled Holding On. And uh, at the time, they were still doing. Uh, Gospel and Jet Magazine, that record that uh, reached the top 10. And uh, all we got for recording that record, we went across the street, uh, Don Roby with Peacock Records, Sunbirds, and we went across the street, he bought us cheeseburgers and, and uh, French fries and, and Cokes, man, and malts. And that's what, that's that's how we got paid for that record. <laughs> but, the rest, but the rest is history, wow. Doc. Yeah, wow. I want all you, all you people that's watching and all everybody, everybody that's watching the playback. The, the William brothers, the legendary William brothers, have even been got before. It happens to us all. You see? Oh, yeah. Nobody's burning them out. Oh, yeah. A team burning them out. Absolutely. Nobody's Absolutely. exempt from getting got. Nobody's exempt. And, and, and a chocolate mouth at that, Drake. A chocolate mouth. <laughs> Listen, it be like that sometimes, man. It be yeah. like that. But we, uh, how did it all start? Who started the group? All of that. Let's go to that. Let's jump back a little bit deeper then before we're going to bring it back up to present. How did it start? Well, the group was originated uh, by my late father, uh, Leon Pop Williams, and my late brother, Frank Williams, back in okay. 19, 1960, man, believe it or not. And you, you put, you had those years ago, 1960. Um, and what is so amazing about this whole journey, man, we came from a very, very small community called Smithdale, Mississippi. Uh, just mostly uh, relatives and friends in that little community, but we had no idea growing up that uh, 
you know, where God was going to take us, man. Uh, we grew up in the cotton fields, picking cotton, pulling corn, digging potatoes, digging peanuts. We raised mm. basically everything that we ate, cows, hogs, chickens. We had it all, you know. I uh, had the old barn back there full of corn and hay and you name it. We were just country boys, uh, a country family. Mm-hmm. And uh, we loved music. We knew we loved music. We knew it was a part of us, but we had no idea where God was going to take us, man. So, I, you know, I often speak about going from the cotton fields to the White House. And, and the amazing journey in between that has, has been unbelievable. Wow. You, you you could almost say from the outhouse to the White House. Uh, just about. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had we had we had, we had one of those house too. Yeah, we had one of those. Uh, going, I wouldn't know nothing about for the that. city folks. You wouldn't know nothing about that. You don't go to well, listen, me neither. I don't go to that. Listen, for the city well, listen, folks, man. we don't know what an outhouse is. Just a bathroom outside. It's a little that's wooden uh, uh, square box that you go use the bathroom on the outside of it. Like a portable. Like, like a portable. Yeah, party. yeah. Right and, up, and then, almost yeah. like a portable. And then we had. We had J.C. Penney's and Sierra catalogs for, for Tisha. Back Tisha there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Yo! True story, man. True story. My dad and my my dad was a brick lay, brick mason and a, and a carpenter. And so him and and my and my and his friend down the street with the lady that helped raise us, he was a carpenter too. It was two carpenters. Three carpenters on that same Williams Brothers Road that we own now. And so when they built the house and and my dad finally built the bathroom on the house, my grandmother didn't like, she's always stayed with us since we were kids. I, ne- I never knew anything but her staying with my mom and dad. That was my dad's mom. And uh, she, it was a long time before she stopped using the outhouse and using the bathroom because she didn't like she didn't. She thought that wasn't private enough, I guess. And she would still go, <laughs> still go to the outhouse and have my older brothers. Somebody would stand at the back door, and if it was night, until she come out of the yeah. outhouse, we like yeah. what? Yeah, man. Wow. So it's crazy, man. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. This is a, this is hilarious. Yes, indeed. Yo, my man, I still can't get over the J.C. Penny. Uh, Paper. I'm done. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. look. As we, Sears look, Roebuck, that, as it used to be Sears Roebuck we, paper. Yeah. We, Sears, <laughs> we, 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 didn't, we didn't look, baby. It was a lot of pages in there. We didn't run out of, t- of tissue to the white with. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, that, that had to hurt. Oh, I, know that was, I know they were hurting. <laughs> now you have to. You had to bottle it up so it gets softer, man. We, Come we, on, we, we, uh, <laughs> yo, yo, Jay, I can't believe it. <laughs> yo, the people in the chat uh, are rolling. Uh, they are on the floor. Uh, look here, man. Every, look, man, this, this, is, this is really kind of embarrassing for me right now. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, now, yeah y'all know what I said. Dre, Dre, you know, but you see, that's why you you are, you you was raised on the, with a silver spoon, dog. You don't even know what we talking about. No, 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 no. He said, no, 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 no. I wasn't raised with a silver spoon, but I ain't had to use a Robux behind it. Listen, man. Listen. Listen. They had sore tushies, man. No, no, no. Look, 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 my, look, my dad and mama wasn't going to spend no money on no Kleenex tissue and all that. Ah! That cost a lot boy, of money, man. Boy, your backside should be cut up and raw. That's what I'm saying, boy. And fences and all. Now that made that made us that made us tough, dog. Yo, I got real tears coming out my eyes. I said, "What did he just say?" Oh my god! You know, you know the ironic thing about it, man. We were poor, but we didn't even realize it. We didn't. Know. I'm right. telling you, I know what you mean. We, we had right, no right, idea man. that we were poor. We had, yeah, because we had everything we needed to eat. We had a shelter over our head, you know. So, even though we didn't have sufficient heat in the house, um, it, yeah. you know, our bedroom had no heat in it at all. There was an old wooden heater in, in the house, and there was no no heater in the room. Period. So. <laughs> On wow. those cold nights, it was just free. We have cover. We have cover this thick on top of it just to stay warm because Doug, there was no heat in there. Doug, God, Doug, I'm God. really. He think he laughing. I'm really gonna make him laugh. Like <laughs> Leonard, Leonard, Doug, and I used to say sleep in the same room. And yes. uh, wow. And I, Doug, Doug had a, we had a one little a one bed, and then we had the the, the 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 regular size bed. So I used to sleep in, and um, and so when I was when I was coming up, I had a. 
a, a weak bladder. I, at least that's what my that's what I told my mom till she whipped me when I was about twelve years old. Oh but my Leonard, god! Used to go to sleep and be cold in there, and I had some I had some wool I had some wool uh, uh, pajamas. Man, it'd be warm on that cover. And I just started dreaming that I was in the bathroom and I just let it go, man. Just let Doug and him have it, huh? Just let him have it. He let him have it. Let him wake up and he was like, man, you done beat on me. Get up out of this bed. Oh, God. Talk about humble beginnings, huh? I let look begin is man. People I just was, don't know. They don't I'd know. stand up in the bed. It would be cold, warm on the cover, but cold and cold, cold in the room. I stand <laughs> up in the bed and my 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 them wet, them whip uh wool pajamas, they be steaming, dog. How you <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it, it would it would be so cold in the room and Melvin let it go his warm but uh, uh, but it was it was all good man and then you know a lot of people and i'm gonna get on the ship I'm a lot of people. That, that part was not right. That's right. Because he was the one getting it. He wasn't. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, well, 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 until my mama got me one morning, she said, okay, we're going to break this up, you know. Enough so, enough. Oh, and God. I cut. I start cutting my. I, I start cutting my dreams real short. They didn't get enough going to the bathroom. I, I know did. that's right. But it, I, I, I but think listen, it was more or less he just didn't want to get up in the cold and go to the bathroom at night. That's what it was. Oh man, that was that was <laughs> that was hilarious, <laughs> man. Getting Probably up in the cold, so. man. So yeah. what would yeah, you man. say from the humble beginnings and, and growing up and um getting you know getting cheese set cheeseburgers for for pay? What was it like when y'all started seeing the money? Was it a uh, did that shake the group? Did that change? You know, because when you know when you go from when you go from zero to a hundred, you know what I mean. They they yeah. get a little different. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, our first hit record was 1973, as Dre said. Um, when we did our first record, a full record, we did one one record with the Jackson Southern Airs on one side and the Williams Brothers on the other side. Of course, we had the big uh, vinyl albums back then so they they were on one side we were on the other side it was called he's my brother mm -hmm. but the first full record that we did was called holding on and the hit song on there was jesus perfected and that song just took off like a jet man and you know we we started mm -hmm. to get calls from people all over the country and the, the, the amazing thing it started happening so fast and we started getting calls from major promoters we didn't even know what to charge a promoter mm -hmm. when they called Wow. So we, um, this promoter came and called us from Atlanta, Georgia. He was putting on this big concert with Reverend James Cleveland and Shirley Caesar. And Jesus for Fix It was the number one song in Atlanta. It was the hottest song in Atlanta. They wanted us to open, open the show. And uh, we didn't know what to charge. So my, my dad uh, called my brother Frank and said, well, what, what should we charge for a show like this? So we've never been on something this big. And Frank said, well, at least ask for $500. Ask for $500. We thought that was big because we had never <laughs> made $500 before. But well, somebody in the 70s, that probably was a lot of money. Yeah, that was that good for us, man. Most of yeah, in and those churches was $100, uh, you know, $150, yeah. and we were good. But to get $500 <laughs> guaranteed, that was the first time ever, man. And it was big for us. So, you know, wow. it was like a light came out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and then, and how, then, how many ways y'all had to split that? Uh, uh, there, were, <laughs> there, were, there were six of us, including Pop. So you know the five guys in the group and, and Pop. So we had to go six ways. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> and, and then and then a lot of times, like that, we didn't spend our money. We would we would save it up and uh, we would do things by uniforms. Have uniforms made. Even back then, even back then, we were having our uniforms tailor made, and with a, 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 a national. Uh, Taylor made a uh, tailor shop in New Orleans, Harry Herman Taylor's on Rampart Street. We had our names and our suits and all that way back then. Doc. We had tailor made suits when we yeah, was in the like, 70s. Y'all weren't playing with it. No, no, yeah, we weren't playing play. My dad, my dad we didn't play. He, he, he meant for everything to be professional from 
from top to bottom, we had to have the same color socks, <laughs> and same color shoes. Everything had to be exactly the same. He didn't play about that. Yo, my 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 father and, and the my father and the thing about right concert. now, he said y'all his boys. Hey, yeah, Pop, man. how you yeah. doing? <laughs> What's up, Pop? What's up? I was just telling our dad. I was explaining to them how you introduced me to their music. But yeah, go ahead with the story, Doug. But, but I, I was going to say about that. Doug was talking about the Atlanta dates with James Cleveland. So James Cleveland came uh, came uh, to us and he asked us, "Did y'all did y'all get your money?" And we said, "Yeah." And uh, so he started telling them how how he conduct his business, and he said. Well, from this point on, so y'all need to get half of y'all's money before you leave home, he said, and I get the rest of mine before I hit the stage. And I said, we say, you do? You don't sing and then they come pay? No, they send me half my money. And then before I hit the stage, they pay me my other half. Right. I said, <laughs> I know that's okay. right. Okay. So, man, we, we started doing that, man. And we got all kind of slack from promoters and even the, the groups back then because they was get they was checking up after the concerts man and which was like really so we started getting our money before we sing and they was like oh y'all think y'all really something y'all too much y'all too big y'all this y'all that y'all too bougie whatever, whatever. no we just want to get paid you know <laughs> and that's that's the thing the thing of it is a lot of times the promoters if you go out and perform before you get paid then sometimes promoters will leave the building and yes. be found. They still they do. Just, they would cry. They would cry. <laughs> they still they do. Have, they would cry that they don't have your money, and you, you know you're supposed to get whatever you're supposed to get. You might get just a fraction of that after you uh -huh. sign. So you know, but so you have to take care of the business part first. Yeah. I, I agree. Y'all hear that? Y'all heard it from the legends themselves. Take care of the business first i know that's right i got an engagement coming up next we already got most of my money already that's See what that? you got to do get See your money dog <laughs> well, you I mean, know the thing I mean, of it is uh, trayvon even though this is ministry yes it's all, it's all about winning souls and, and, and doing yes, the work of the lord but it's still a business this is how we make our living so we have to you know conduct it in a business manner we just can't well, ain't y'all singing for the Lord? Yes, we are, but we're also singing for a living. This is how we pay our bills. This is how we support our families. So we have to conduct business like business. That's how. That's all we can be done. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, man. So it's just it's so. So we've been we've been really really taught by a lot of great people, a lot of great artists, a lot of great uh, entertainers, and people in the business. And uh, we just absorbed all of that all that knowledge, man, and then put it into use. And uh, and here we are still here today, man. And I just I just know that God has a special something for us, man, because we're still here, man. I mean, I look at all our favorite groups like the Dixon Humbers, all those guys, all of the Mighty Cloud of Joy, every original member, man, is, is not with us anymore, yeah. man. Yeah. James Cleveland, <laughs> there is no... There is no, there is no more Edwin and Walter Hawkins, which was great friends of ours, man. Oh, yeah. and, and it's just when you think about that, man, it's like, oh my God, where did these people go, man? And right. it's like, but then you just have to take all that knowledge, man, and just, and just, and just, and just use it for for your for 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 the better betterment of your career and the betterment of uh, for your family and your future and your grandkids and all of that, man. So. Right now, I'm saying I'm saying it for grandkids. Right now, I'm out here now. Matter of fact, when we, before we started this interview, I was at my my son-in-law's. Uh, we they have they having a crawfish boil day for the church, and they all out there in a big tent, and they singing and cutting up and eating crawfish and turkey necks and sausages and stuff. I might take me a something a high blood pressure pill when I leave. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't never been into the crawfish, man, but uh, y'all yeah. love it. Y'all like it, I love it. Whatever, man. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want no problem with that. They yeah, never them. been into all that. Oh, Give me some fish and shrimps. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah all right. You know. But you know, <laughs> Matt, you know, Matt, speaking of that, you know, it's so much history. Uh, when even the talking about eating, and I was talking to you, I, I thought about when I said high blood pressure. People back in the day when we were coming up, they, we, they used to kill hogs, man. They, and then the community would come and help clean the hogs and gut them, cut up the meat, grind the sausage. And they would they were eating pork and 
and fried sausages and bacon. And these people live to get 90 and 100 years old, man. But the it's the preservatives it, and everything that they put right, in stuff they, now. Right, right, exactly, right. man. <laughs> they were working. They were getting up, going into the fields at 7 o'clock. They were in the field working, man. And and uh, so all of this stuff, man, like you said, it, it, it was pure, man. It, we we raised, we, we went to the... Uh, the the, uh, the what we call the grinding mill and had our had our corn mill grind our corn we had pure corn that when we had said cornbread now we uh -huh. had we had that real cornbread did you want your cornbread yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had the real deal man but so it's uh it's just amazing man that I'm I know Dre and Doug and we all uh I'm so grateful that we've had a chance to be a part of the old and the new man and this yeah, new generation yeah. and to bring all of these songs to this new generation. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to be amazing. My granddaughter is, out there, man. Which is my next there. question. Yes. Yeah. How did you guys, because like we talking about from the 60s, we, this is 2022, the William brothers have... <clears throat> somehow managed to stay consistent and relevant what was the key to that who was the force behind that what would you say went into that well one Maybe of the things uh, we just want to first of all just uh, <clears throat> a lot of prayer <laughs> fasting and praying that, that god would keep us and uh but we wanted our music to stay relevant as well uh so we had to change some with the time even though we were uh traditional gospel of quartet originally, but we've always included something in there a little bit different for the another, you know, other genres of, of people who love other genres of music. So uh -huh. we've added a little contemporary, we would add a little urban contemporary, we tried some country stuff, you know, back in the day. So we it's always try to, to mix up some stuff, man, that, that we could stay mm -hmm. relevant. And the main thing we didn't want to get what didn't want to happen was we didn't want to get left behind. You didn't want to become yeah. complacent. We didn't want to become complacent. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't want to be left behind. And are we just going to do it this way? And this is it. Well, no, you got to kind of change with the times a little bit musically to stay up with the times. So, but, and uh, we've been very fortunate that along the way, we've been able to, to, to uh, appeal, like you said, to not just the older audience, but to the young people as well who That's love, amazing, it, love our music. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> let, let me, let me get a little deeper in there with that, man. So we, we we listen to a little the OJ, the Temptation, we uh, Stevie Wonder, some 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 Marvin Gaye and all of that, and we mixed it all up in like a gumbo and and uh, and just kind of they, we call it biting. So we bit off of everybody a little bit and made it, it your own and yeah, made it our own, own, man. And even though we had to hide our records and keep pop breaking them up, if you found us playing them blues, blues and RB in the house, you know, it, so we had we did it like that. But anyway, but it was a great lesson, man, for us to uh, to be able to to like uh, Dre said to just keep it relevant, uh, and that was part of it. Then the Jacksons came along, you know, and I said, okay, yeah. But we always wanted to be the Temptations, man. We got our broomsticks and everything. <laughs> then we finally got a song sweep around, so we had our own brooms. Sweep around your own front door. That was about Dre. Dre, <laughs> Dre Tate, you have had the distinct honor and pleasure of being around these legends for multiple years now. What is What would you say is one of the, the greatest things you've learned in your journey with these guys? Uh, One of the greatest things I've learned, I would say, um, uh, how they taught me to be professional on stage, be professional at home. Uh, it's easier to to do that when you're practicing what you do for a living and you're doing the same thing at your house. You know what I'm saying? So sure. they uh, when you go, they taught me like when you go out, you always got to present your be presentable because uh, you never know who you're gonna see, who's gonna know you. You know, and, and different things like that, man. And and the crazy thing is that's the same thing that I teach my kids. Right. Even now that wants to be in the music business themselves. You gotta remain professional at all times as much as you can. You know, we're human, uh, we're flawed, but at the same time, you gotta be professional, you know, inside and out. So that's one of the that's one of the greatest things that they taught me. 
And with that being, it, it keeps me separated from the norm. If I could say that it keeps me right. separate from the normal guy, you know, or whatever it, 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 it's a blessing to my life. You know what I'm saying? And, and that along with a whole bunch of other stuff that I learned, you know, from, from Melvin and Doug and Mr. Green, um, <clears throat> and even Leonard, man, you know, uh, growing up, they always had that persona, uh, uh, what, what my man in, uh, Car uh, Carlos Hale, uh, gave yeah. me a name, Sex for Jesus. The Williams <laughs> brothers sex for Jesus back in the seventies. You know, they had the, they had they had the, they had the, the chest out with the chains and everything, the big froze and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. so it's like they they it's like a lot of people tell me now, man. It's like you the Williams brothers now, like they was in the seventies or something like that. Yeah. You know the, how you carry yourself. But that's because I've been watching these guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How they carry themselves. Always presentable. Always neat. You know, never homely looking. They taught us that stuff on the road. When you come out, man, don't y'all walk in this place with no shorts on. And, you know, dude, we had chores on the bus. When we had our tour bus, we all had a week to clean the bus. Everything, yeah. man. You know, so it's a lot of that stuff. Discipline. That, Discipline. Yeah, it, it, it got me to where I am today, man. Like, really. Yeah, I know yeah, that's man. right. You you guys have um, done so much and been a part of so many uh, historical moments. As you got historical historical moments, I was just thinking about um, as you were talking about Aretha and 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 Andre Crouch and that you guys were there in all those pivotal moments when Aretha probably did her first gospel album. Yes, and, I know. And, I know when it came out, Doc. And, and and all those type of things i'm like wow as i'm listening to you guys talk i'm like wow look at how much history these guys was a part of you yeah. know what i'm saying do you guys ever feel like i mean you guys are definitely legends i, I tell you this and I, and it, i know most people are like oh you're trying to say i'm old yo you're seasoned you're seasoned yeah. and you got a, you got some skin in the game you definitely mm -hmm. got skin in the game uh do y'all still look i mean well obviously y'all look at yourself as, as legends now because uh, you're, you're retiring. <laughs> you call it a quit. Yes. But do you guys feel like y'all got y'all due? I don't think so. Well, that's me. That's me speaking for them and on okay. their behalf. That's me speaking for the brothers on their behalf. I really, I really don't think that the brothers have, but it ain't over yet. It's not. It ain't over this yet. is why and we I can't really quit. Feel like, right, right, right. I really feel like <laughs> I really feel like this farewell, nothing but the hits tour, uh, because believe it or not, we don't talk about it a lot. But in the middle of the tour, we're gonna do a live recording. See, love and it. I do believe that this is gonna be their first Grammy. I really believe that in my heart. Wow, wow. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Uh, we need we need to we need to celebrate these guys even the more. Like right. I said, I you guys have always been legends to me. Uh, you know, what I mean, I love yeah, I love you guys for real, for real. Uh, but Good like man. I said, we we need to talk about the Williams brothers more. You guys are really a part of of great history. Man. Yeah, y'all I mean, yeah. made it. Y'all made history. Yeah, yeah. So what we do now is we on we standing on you guys' shoulders. You know, what right. I mean? right, right, yeah. And that's the, and that's the thing, you know. The other thing with the tour, like I said, those songs, uh, hopefully, we're just penetrating a lot of this new millennium's hearts and minds and soul. The note and and they'll get the picture and know that this is this is our music. This is traditional gospel music. Is is us? This is we were, you know, we are black people that was raised in the church. The black church is the foundation of 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 our race, man. So you can't throw away Precious Lord and Amazing Grace and, you know, and all of those songs that brought us through slavery and up to the civil rights movement. And that, that's why they lasted so long, man. They had substance and they was, it was real and they had meaning behind them and, and they were sung through generation through generation, you know, walk with me, Lord, and all that stuff. So I want them to see that this is a part of their history of this part of their legacy and this is a part of them and 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 they need to make sure that this music never dies even though they're not playing on the radio like they should uh they've moved on to a lot of other things which which i 
I just totally disagree with because I look at R and B and I look at all the R and B stations. They they got an oldie but goodies, you know, where they go back and they playing all of the Motown stuff. They playing all of the. I gotta say this here. So so hey, you know, come on, Mel, man. Uncle Mel, I gotta say this here. What you're saying is so uh, is so factual because I say this all the time. We the only ones that discard. Hello, our generation. Hello, right. man. Come on. We the man. only ones that do that. Well, in hello, the secular man. world, all you gotta do is win one Grammy. You a Grammy? Oh yeah, right. Oh, that's it, baby. Yeah, they, that's they, it, this baby. Dude's still traveling in in R B. They John B yes. is still out here traveling because of yes. don't listen to right. what people said. <laughs> right, yes, right. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's he got man. one one big one. He's yeah, still yeah, working. Man. And there well, you the, know, the sad, man. the sad thing about it is, it's almost like they're trying to, as Melvin said, disregard the real history and yeah. trying to and you, act like it, trying to act like it didn't happen. Yeah, I don't but, like that part. I but, get, you know, well, this yeah, is the, yeah. but the traditional gospel music is the foundation. This is what everything else was built up on. So, this is the found, you know, a house with no foundation is going to fall. You can't that's right. That's, that one you're not the funny, the weird the part about that. I was yeah. just thinking the weird part about that is you was just saying, Trevon, that the R and B, the secular side, don't they still honoring the fathers, the forefathers? Oh my yes, God, they do. You know? Yes, they do. But they do. in gospel music, it's like they're trying to extinct, make the forefathers extinct. You know, yeah. and yeah. I think that's some that's that's a messed up way of uh, even thinking, man. You know what I'm saying? Because. We don't right. even make as much money as the secular. No, side. we don't. No, you we see don't. What I'm saying a fraction, if that. Right, right, <laughs> right. And you're doing damage, but to stuff. You know, it's 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 weird, man. It's it's and weird. What, the line is, what, you should be you should be appreciative of, of your history. I mean, right. What, the ones who, the, who who paved the way for you, the ones who went before you, went through all the trials mm -hmm. and tribulations, and you know, went through the the hard times. Uh, couldn't stay at certain hotels. You could you could eat at certain restaurants because right. you were of the color of your skin. This is stuff that these artists went through. Mm -hmm. So why would you try to make that extinct when right. you should be really relishing right. the fact that I these agree. people fought the battle for you to enjoy these and, fine hotels and, that you're staying in today and, and live, you know go to these fine I restaurants agree. that you're eating in today right. and all that kind of stuff, right. you know. Right. And and the thing is, thing is, they need to know more so than that too. Is that you cannot erase history. You can't erase can't. history. I don't care what you do. History is made. When it's made, it's made. What happened yesterday is history. So you can't you can't erase that, buddy. If the so, sun didn't shine yesterday and it rained, that was history. Okay. So the bottom line so, is, you know, everybody have their preference of what what type of music they like. Mm -hmm. But whether you like quartet or not, it's still a part of your history. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's because, a fact. Because back in the day, before all the other genres got really popular, it was the quartet music that was the biggest music in gospel, period. And it will be again. Right. Yeah, I it think it still is. is. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Right. You, know, you know, they try to downplay the quartet. I got your on, own audience. <laughs> Yeah, so I right, got your own right. audience. I'm telling you, right, I've right. been to Cortez events. I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> that's, <laughs> like, that's like where these people come yeah. from. Cortez right, got their right. own audience. That's a yeah, whole yeah. fact. Absolutely. There's a whole so, audience. I think, I, I think people just really should put some respect. Like, uh, who the, the, the rap artist should put some respect? Put yeah, some yeah. Respect on, put some, some respect, respect on, on the Put some respect man. on my name. Respect, respect on, on my name. Man. But, yeah. you, know, you guys, are like, unlike so many others, you guys, I feel, yeah. definitely did get uh, a lot of recognition. Uh, like, but I agree with Dre. Uh, it should be even more. You know what I'm saying? It should right, be right. even more. But what I mean, you, you performed at the White House. What what else is there to say? It don't get no bigger than that. Yeah, you know what I mean. What yeah. else is to say? You guys yeah. have yeah. have reached the yeah. highest of the highest plateau. Yeah. And like I said, this is the show where we give the flowers while y'all can still smell them. Because like I said, if nobody else tell y'all, y'all mean the world to gospel music. I'm gonna tell y'all right. right now. Thank, thank, the thank world you. To gospel thank music you. Into thank me. you, man. And to okay. all of those, everybody's in this chat is saying it too. Like we need y'all. Oh, yeah. People in the chat yeah. saying, "Don't quit." I need more of y'all. Say everybody say, "Don't quit, don't quit." Everybody say that. Maybe they. Won't. Ah. <laughs> so, so, 
Hey, Before we hey, go, listen, Dre, hey, listen, why, why don't you give us some they, information, man, how they can connect wait, with us and, and stay with us you know, concerning this tour, get all the information concerning yes. the tour. So yep. the people let me, who want to who want to be a part of the tour, who want to come and, and, and see the Williams <laughs> brothers do the farewell, nothing but the his tour, give them that information, Dre. And let, let me just say this. My, my phone is about to go out, so if I happen to go out, y'all, I just want y'all to know I love y'all fans. Look forward to seeing y'all on this yeah. Wasn't nothing but the hits to us. So if my phone go, if I go out, y'all know why. I'm just my battery is about you over talking. That's why. <laughs> I had to, Talk I had the battery to, down. I had to the tell y'all about man. how, how we how phone. we did it. Oh, how we had god. to sleep in the room together, man. Oh <laughs> god. But uh, tell them how they can connect with the road. Yeah, tell them how we can connect connected. with y'all and where these tours are gonna be taken. Are y'all coming new to New York? Well, we hopefully sure, we, we sure <laughs> hope so. We gonna. Okay. I just hope we come before it get cold. Right. <laughs> but well, anyway, uh, what we have, we have a system set up where the tour information can come to your smartphone. Uh, actually, uh, all you have to do is text the word "brothers" in all capital letters with the S on the end. Brothers to 601-210-7800. That's six zero one two one zero. 7800. When you do that, uh, all the information about the, the uh, Farewell Nothing But This 2 will be coming straight to your smartphone. Uh, when you do that, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, prompt you to put your uh, information in, your address, whatever. And not only that, you're going to receive an a autograph signed poster from the Williams Brothers uh, that we personally signed. You know, so everybody that does that will get that. And also you get information about the tour, tour dates, merchandise, uh, just all the information concerning the tour that you would need to, to pretty much see what's going on and what we're doing. You know, you're going to get all that information. So uh, awesome. we, 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 we ask that everybody, as many people as they can do that. Again, text the word BROTHERS in all capital letters to 601. 210-7800. Get your tickets, um, all of that stuff for all the selected cities. Follow all the directions right. and keep up with the Williams Brothers. Now, what page should they follow? Follow the follow the Williams on Instagram. It's the Williams Brothers Tour. Okay. And I think it's the same thing on Facebook. But you uh, lately, you've been seeing a whole bunch of old school videos from the brothers uh you know we just promoting and and com commemorating the years that that has came before us with all the old songs all the way up to the new songs you know so we're doing that a lot now we want to make this i want to make this great for the guys you know i'm i'm like i'm like that that person out in the bible that was holding the arms up that's all mm -hmm. i want to do with these guys i want to help hold their arms up because they they worked they worked out here for the all this time you know and and I just want to hold them up, you know what I'm saying? And right. and 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 what a just great job. yeah, get get. And I want the world to appreciate the man because these guys have written songs for you, you would not even imagine. Some of the songs that y'all heard were written by either. Let's talk about that. What's the, what, what, before y'all go? What's some of the songs that y'all written? Let's talk about that. Let's put that out there. That's what we gonna do. They don't remember. <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> oh man. <laughs> They but I can, I can them. just I can say <laughs> I, I can just say that we produce we've produced so many artists it, it's just uh it's just crazy man so right from right. the Ken Spirituals, uh the Bolton brothers Joy. mighty cloud of joy uh, uh, Bi Bishop Paul Martin yes. uh, oh man wow. come right. on man yeah just a lot of people so Yolanda it's uh, Adams, the, the, uh, the pace Yolanda the pace Adams, the truth facts right. uh, uh, the list goes on yeah right yeah right tell you, I tell you they make it real Bella, do this before you go. Uh, for, for all the promoters out there who are, who may be interested in bringing the Williams Brothers Farewell Nothing But the Nothing But the Hits tour to their area, give them the number to call if they're interested uh, in bringing the brothers in for tour. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in booking the Farewell Nothing But the Hits tour by the Williams Brothers, you can you can call 414-699-8300. Five seven. That's four one four six nine nine eight three five seven seven. And just ask for Bridget. I ain't really worried about the last name. And that's Bridget. 
and I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna pin it. I'm gonna pin it once this interview is over. I'm also gonna pin it in the actual video as well. I'm gonna get that. April has that information, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna get it from her. We're gonna have it pent up so that everybody could know that um, this is the number to call for every promoter that's interested in bringing this tour to a city near them, to a city near you. We're gonna get that going for you guys. Like I said, we celebrate you. We give you flowers. You guys are legends. I am so humbled today that you guys agreed to sit with me and we got to do this up close and personal one day before it's really all over. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Look forward to it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once again, you guys have had a great run and you guys are still running. I can't wait to hear this new album. I can't wait to hear this new album. (laughs) I can't wait for it. It's going to be good. Follow the Williams Brothers tour on Instagram and Facebook. Get all of your details from there. Until next time, please remember to live in purpose, on purpose, for the purpose God has on your life. We love y'all. We out. God bless you. Love you.